Now, enter Nathaniel Green. Nathaniel Green is the new commander of American forces, the Continental Army in the South. One of George Washington's great friends. Um, in fact, he was the person Washington wished, wanted to send down first, but Congress sent Horatio Gates. Um, and along with him came an, in, uh, an incredible Virginia soldier, Daniel Morgan. Uh, in North Carolina, they managed to patch together an army of Continentals and militia. And then Nathaniel Green did something very daring that most military commanders don't do. He divided his army, which was already outnumbered by the British. He divided them. He took the main section of the army with him to Sherraw in South Carolina, right along the border, where he could get food and fodder for his forces, because the area around Charlotte, North Carolina had been depleted by the, by the British. He sent the rest of his army under Daniel Morgan west across South Carolina uh, to threaten British outposts at 96 and perhaps even going all the way, um, all the way to Georgia. So Cornwallis's response was instead of taking on one American force at a time when he had the superior forces, he divided his army. He stayed there looking after you know, he didn't want General Greene to all of a sudden decide to leave Chiraw and take Camden, South Carolina, which was the main British outpost in the back country. He sent Bannister Tarleton, his right-hand man, to go chasing after uh, Daniel Morgan. When Morgan realized he was being pursued, he decided to make a stand. And he decided to make a stand at a place called Hannah's Cowpens. Now, the re there's a reason it's called a cowpen, because in the back country of the Carolinas, People raised cattle on the open range. We had cowboys in the Carolinas for a long time before they got to Texas, okay? Uh, and what you would do is individuals would get together at a cow pen, so they'd be herded together, and because you know one farmer might have 10, one might have five, they'd get together and then they would have a cattle drive to the market in Charleston, okay? So it was also chosen by Daniel Morgan, because everybody knew where Hannah's cow pens was. So all of a sudden, with what has happened uh, elsewhere, you've got hundreds of militia, patriot militia, signing up, moving in with uh, Daniel Morgan. Um, he, his battle plan, and I'm, I must say it's still studied today at the United States Military Academy at, at West Point. Um, because of its significance. He knew his men, he knew the terrain, and he knew his enemy. Everything a commander needs to do to be successful. And what I mean about that is he had a mixed army, Daniel Morgan did, of Continentals who could stand up to the British, a British bayonet charge. He had militia who might be good for a couple of, couple of rounds and then they're gonna wanna get out of the way of a British charge. And so he took that into consideration. That was part of his plan, was to have the militia on the front line to fire two volleys and then maneuver around. They would be, then they'd be regulars, and then there was cavalry in reserve. And as things worked out, as soon as Tarleton, who was impetuous, and Morgan knew that, as soon as he saw that first rank of Americans, the militia, break ranks and move, he thought they're going to Now's the time to move in for the kill. Well, as soon as he moved in, Colonel William Washington and his cavalry sweep around the side, and the American infantry turns around and fires two more volleys point blank into the advancing British. This is the only pitched battle in the American Revolution where British forces turned and ran from the American army, the Battle of Cowpens. In an hour, Bannister Tarleton had lost 1,000 men, killed, wounded, or captured. It's an incredible blow to Cornwallis's army. He personally escaped narrowly after uh, a head-to-head -head clash with Colonel William Washington of uh, the Continental Cavalry. And he also, as Tarleton retreated, and he did escape, his men didn't, he, had, he did, he ordered huge stocks of British military materiel, arms, food, destroyed so as not to fall into the hands of the Americans. Now, 
The significance of, of CalPANS, first of all, is a tremendous morale booster for everybody. But more importantly, Cornwallis's army is, is now weakened just as he's planning a new invasion of North Carolina and Virginia.